back at the shop again. Today we are going to work on the OS105 regulator. Very important to maintain this. Sometimes you get chunks of dirt stuck in here and you get fuel flowing all over the table and, and, uh, and you need to clean it. You need to get the small particles of dirt that came from your fuel tank or your fuel magnet or whatever they are out of here so that you can regulate your fuel a little bit better. So before we start on that, let's talk about how this regulator works. So you have your piston downstroke creates pressure. Uh, that pressure goes through your back plate, through the check valve, and into your fuel tank. That creates a pressurized fuel tank that gives you a, uh, a constant pressure to this regulator. Now, how does this regulator actually meter the fuel to your, uh, to your needles? Well, when you open your carburetor, the more you open it, the more vacuum you create on the back side of the regulator. That vacuum then sucks down on a diaphragm. That diaphragm moves a, a small rocker assembly that's on a spring, and that rocker has a fork on it which lifts up a what you would call probably a, a needle with a little rubber, rubber tip on it. That rubber tip sits in a, a small cavity that if there's any bit of dirt or anything in that cavity, you're gonna let fuel flow right by it. So, let's take a look at the insides of this regulator. Okay, before we took a look, take a look at the insides of this regulator, here are the tools you're gonna to need to take it apart. First, your 1.5 millimeter hex driver. You're gonna need some high temp RTV for the set screw. You're going to need a pair of tweezers or small needle nose pliers and of course your regulator. Also probably a, a bottle of spray alcohol. I use uh, this, this Zepp bottle because they last fairly long but I use 70% alcohol to clean stuff like this. Okay first you're going to want to take out these uh, small two millimeter screws. There are five of them. Okay, next, remove the retainer plate. Set that to the side. Okay, next, remove the diaphragm and be cautious that when you move the diaphragm you set that exactly how it came out so that you remember how it came out. Okay, next, this part can be a little bit tricky. There's a set screw right in that cavity right there. And the set screw is easy to remove. And it, as you remove it, you could tell that there is some RTV on the end of that set screw. That RTV is to seal that up. So make, make sure that you use RTV to seal this set screw. Okay, the tricky part is actually removing the pin here. There's the pin. There's the pin that holds this rocker assembly and it's right there. And what you need to do is you need to slide it to the side so that you can grab it from the other side. So just carefully use your, your tweezers and grab, slide, grab, slide. And there's a spring under this rocker assembly. So hold your thumb, hold your thumb on this assembly as you're sliding this out. Otherwise, the spring's gonna fly out and you're gonna be very upset. So once you have it scooted far enough out, you can grab the pin, hopefully. Okay, there's the pin. Tiny little two millimeter pin. Okay, now carefully release your thumb and what you'll see here is this rocker assembly just like so. Okay, small seat will come off the rocker assembly. There's your small little spring. Okay, first and foremost, this is the part that usually gets clogged. It looks like the looks like a needle that sits in the bottom of a carburetor bowl and the little tip is uh, a rubber type material and sometimes stuff can get caught on that. So what you want to do is clean that off real nice. Use your alcohol, spray that down and clean that real good. Okay, the next part you want to clean <clears throat> is inside 
of this regulator. There's a few ports in there. There's the in and then there's the out. Fuel comes in, fuel goes out. Both of those need to be sprayed down either with alcohol or carb cleaner or anything that you use to, to clean those small ports. And what I do is I take compressed air and I shoot it through both of those holes to make sure there's no garbage stuck in there. After that, and you know, be careful not to bend this small little rocker assembly. This thing is timed up so it delivers a certain amount of fuel with a certain amount of vacuum pressure. <clears throat> okay, so after it's all clean, the reassembly. Put that back on there like that. Put your spring back in place. So you put your spring in place first. There's a small little cavity for it. Place your rocker assembly with your needle back where it belongs. Okay. Put your thumb on the assembly and slide the pin back in where it belongs. Okay, after you're done with that, you can take and you can blow through, you can cover these holes right here, and you can blow through this hole while operating this, and you can tell whether you're, you've successfully cleaned it or not. If you get any blow by when you blow on this right here, it means there's still something wrong with this assembly and probably need to do it all over again. If there's nothing wrong with the assembly, go ahead and reinstall your diaphragm, reinstall your plate. The set screw, make sure you put the RTV on the set screw and back in its hole. I'm not going to do it right now because this is a backup regulator that still needs cleaned a little bit. Put all your screws back in. And that's it. Your carburetor regulator is now clean and functional again.